Hello and greetings everyone. It is Gleekon back at you again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. On our last episode we read through chapter 5 of the Alliance Player's Guide to Dungeons and Dragons romp through all things World of Warcraft and we specifically focused on technology, tech mods, and, and uh, those little weapons and bombs and add-ons that are most appropriate to the Alliance setting or uh, uh, faction. We've also been playing through World of Warcraft Classic, and on the last one uh, we did Mil uh, Maleficent, and Millie there ran through the rest of Loch Lodon, so that zone has been wrapped. Um, she will be doing some Red Ridge Mountains quests next, as is Arator, and w soon will be Kali, which will do the first round of Kali. Nessingleri, Arator, and Moln, I, I mean, I'm sorry, and Millie have all done the first patch of that off camera. Kelly will be doing that episode soon. So we're now going to jump in, stay a while, and listen as Moln takes us through a part that I've done with a couple characters already, which is the next little section in the Barrens. Okay, so if you notice, we're in Ratchet. Um, we have a bunch of things going on. We have seven quests available through Questy, so we're going to kind of explore Actually, we're not even going to explore Ratchet right now because we have some other things that need to happen. Um, if you notice, we have a Chen's Empty Keg quest. So once you turn the empty keg into old Chen, uh, he says, Would you like a taste of Chen's namesake? Ah, the Storm Stout is a mighty brew. Chen taught the recipe to my mentor, and my mentor passed it on to me. I'll need to get you to get me a few things, but I can tell you this, the kick is worth it. Bring me five Savannah Lion tusks from the Savannah Lion, five Plain Strider kidneys from any Plain Strider, and one Thunder Lizard horn from any species of Thunder Lizard. That should do the trick nicely. You will find these ingredients throughout the Barrens, and we will grind those in ingredients out as we do uh, some other things. Um, we're also going to kill the Harpy Lieutenants. We're going to swim in and quickly plant some seeds in the Stagnant Oasis. We're going to kill Echeyaki, and we're even going to get Varog's head, and that should bring us through hour. We're not going to explore Ratchet yet on this episode. I think we'll do that next episode as we run through this, so when we are back with our orc here. So what we're going to do right now is... I think I'm going to fly us over to the crossroads. I think that is what uh, sounds good to me. Um, let's see what my bags look like. Okay, remember that if we can find Kodos, we can kill them with this character to continue to grow our, um, our bag situ sitch. I also need to take this guy over to um, learn some more first aid. How's our money? We're doing okay on money. I'm assuming I have already learned my level 18 powers. Who the heck knows? There's the flight path. What's up? We'll spend a little bit of dinero, a little bit of silver to fly back over to the crossroads. And then what we'll do is we'll mar we'll walk up and um, start by fighting whatever randos that we see among these, that's actually gonna probably take us a big chunk of the episode. The most we'll be getting this stuff for Chen's empty keg, which will then open up a repeatable um, Chen kind of alternate brew quest. This will give us some brew to drink from time to time. It's like a decreases your intelligence, but increases your damage, something like that. You get a drunken rage kind of thing. Um, the Savannah Lion tusks are a a decent drop rate. The kidneys for the plane striders are lower. The thunder lizard horn is meh, but you only have need one of them. So we will be killing those. We should be fine. We're level 18. This guy's pretty tough. Um, this guy says, LMFAO at the Miami Heat. I am a Minnesota Timberwolves fan. Um, so we are entering this period of my life where I'm bound to be disappointed. We played the Lakers tonight. Uh, universally, we are being uh, predicted to lose that game. Um, we're in the play-in tournament if you follow basketball. Uh, so even if we lose, it's not all over. I think they might just like phone it in, which is why I think everyone's, we have some, we're not at full strength right now, we'll just say. And we say we because I obviously am a member of the um, Timberwolves. Me personally, I, I obviously play for the team. Um, so this is Savannah Huntress. Got the furry paw. Nothing special there. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think we should be okay. I'm kind of reeling in my personal life because I just received a text from my boss shortly before making this episode back 
Um, and we got a kidney right off the bat. I love it. It basically told me um, I'm going to be getting screwed at work for the next month and a half. Um, and I am a team player, so I'm going to make it work. Uh, but yeah, this is... Uh, the sooner that I get famous on this show, the better. Not famous. I don't need to be famous. But, um... Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be really biting the bullet. It shouldn't affect our show very much. What it's going to do is... So... I don't like to get into too many de details because of the nature of my job. Um... So I really don't like to, to get into specifics, as you can tell, I'm, I'm intentionally vague a lot of the times about what I do, and I, I like to keep it that way. Um, but, I'm going to jinx it, so I'm not going to say anything about this game. But, uh, I basically somebody at my job that I work fairly closely with is no longer employed um, I would not say that I was friends with this person they're just a colleague um, they have not been I'm not surprised I don't know if they quit or if they were fired um, they have not been doing a good job they've been struggling at their role, um, we have hugely, I'm very experienced at my job, I've been doing it for a very long time, and not to toot my own horn, but I'm quite good, whereas in this game that we play right here, um, you know, I have a lot of room to improve, I just tried to do a, a, a Mythic 11 on retail today, and um, failed, I sucked, uh, I'm getting, ooh, I'm running out of so, um, I'm going to have to drink some water after this fight, I think. Um, I might as well eat some of this, too, to get myself the spirit buff. But, at my actual real-life job, um, I've been doing it for a while, and I, I am... Oh, I forgot that I'm a freaking Skinner, and I'm wasting all this... Wasted all these animals I could be skinning. What am I doing? That's a waste. Oh well, we're gonna kill a bunch more. It'll be okay. So I've been trying to tell this guy, like, uh, some ways that, you know, he can be more successful and things that I would do differently. And I've been showing him, and um, he. You know, we're adults. We all have pride. He has not been responding well. He's been really unprofessional and adversarial toward me. Um, and I know that he has had quite a few talks with bosses. And I don't know that he... I think he's saying the right things when he's having these confrontations, but then nothing's changing in terms of... We're not enough is changing in terms of his performance and how he approaches the job. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I got a text from the old boss saying, basically, we're all going to need to come together and do this guy's job. Um, for the near future. And for me, that's going to translate into a good six weeks. Um, I was assured I've had to do this earlier in the year for somebody else that didn't cut it. And I ended up having to spend, again, like probably about six weeks until they could find a replacement covering work. And uh, they assured me that I had done my duty for the team, and I would not be put in that role again, and they've, for the most part, been true to their word for the past three months, but yeah, now I got the text saying, hey, we gotta band together and do this, you know, boss speak, and uh, they're like, oh, but don't worry, this is not gonna take up your entire 
day because I do have an actual job of my own in addition to this and helping others and being a mentor and yada yada yada. I have my own job. Um, it's a pretty involved and complicated job. It involves a lot of uh, oversight and administerial type of duties. So what I am most worried about is not my ability to do this other person's job, whatever that is, what it is. Um, I worked my way up through the years. I, I, that part will be fine. It's the fact that for the next six weeks, which is really crunch time for me, um, when I can't like just cut corners on my responsibilities, I'm also going to be doing the full-time job of someone else. Uh, and they they made it sound in the text like, hey, we'll work together. And then they sent out like the spreadsheets showing like the assignment of the duties. And it's like 90% going to go to me. So I can't, there's not a lot I can do or say. Um, obviously, you can, you, I could like refuse and contractually, I would be in my rights to do so. But if, uh, when it came time to renew contracts or it, it would not be the, it would be a very very suicidal career move of me to tell my bosses no um that's just kind of life uh at least it is in my profession um again if i get to the part where like on this show i'm sustaining myself like that'd be cool I would much prefer to just play this with you guys and make higher quality videos. Like, I know the lighting really sucks. I need to replace some lights in my current video setting. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so I'm just kind of digesting that. That's why I'm doing this verbal di diarrhea venting with you guys right now because I just found this out. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna, I was about to go make an episode and I just took a big... I got shat on um, in a hardcore way. So I'm going to make the best of it. That's life. That's what it is. And all those other truisms. Um, what else can you really do? I'm going to make the best of it. And do the best I can. You know, that's, I think, a line that. I have to walk, you know, we all have different flaws. I am a very roll with it kind of dude. Um, I'm very low confrontation. Things do not rock my vote very often, but that puts me in situations where I can be taken advantage of. Um, so there's that line of putting your foot down and not being a pushover and carving out the space that you need to, to take care of yourself and do the things that you need to do. And what really gets me in a catch-22 here is, do I... Um, I have different bosses that oversee different elements of, of my job. So do I... I'm going to go down and get that Thunderhorn because I've had an amazingly good RNG we've just busted through all the kidneys and all the tusks so fast. That's what I didn't want to jinx myself on. Um, ooh, here's a Kodo. I think I do. I think I just need to get that horn. I want this for in case I can get that letter from, from this guy. But yeah, so I have one boss where I'm. we are in crunch time. And I am one of the main people in my organization that are in charge of the stuff that gets done. I'd say, like, there's my boss, and then I'm number two. And we have a lot of crap coming up. That's my responsibility. Um, don't want to screw over my boss. But that boss, that's a boss that I work with very closely um, we have very similar roles and they're kind of, I've been sort of working my way up the ranks in, in various channels and, uh, that will most likely, that kind of arena that, that boss oversees would most likely be if I get a promotion to become one of the bosses, um, it'd be 
sort of over those departments. And I don't want to poop on that. I want to take care of that and do it well. Um, but my other boss is pushing is, is so I can't piss this boss off either and they all go to the big boss so I basically have like three bosses that are directly above me um, one main boss of the whole organization and then the, I'm in the, like the next tier so whatever uh, middle management or whatever like I like I, I am I get paid more, I have more responsibilities, I have other duties um, than the vast majority of the people there. But, um, like, I I have hiring power, but I, I couldn't, like, unilaterally go fire someone. Or unilaterally hire someone. I could go interview someone, and then I could say, this is who we should hire, and then they would go pull the trigger on that. Um, without just doing anything other than my say so, but I couldn't pull the same thing with the firing. But I couldn't pull those triggers on my own, so I'm not quite at that rank. Uh, which is what um, what I've been working towards, and what you know, I, what what I have my masters in, and everything. Uh, so whatever, it's just a, a tightrope to walk. Um, Not a lot for me to do. So thanks for listening, guys. In the meantime, you see me kill some creatures. Uh, we just need a Thunder Lizard Horn, and... I don't know what those things are. Thunderhawk Hatchlings. I mean, I, I recognize them. Yeah, so I did... Uh, what's it called? I did a Mythic today, a Mythic 11, which is the first one I've run. I think item level-wise... I'm fine on a Mythic 11 in retail. Um, I'm like 397 with my main, which is not so good, but it's definitely enough to handle an 11. I was top DPS on the board. Um, the mechanics are what got me. Uh, I was able to handle the mechanics for the affixes for this week. That was fine. Um, most of them I'm familiar with, and I just need to... I haven't been doing it this season. I've only done a few Mythics, so that was my first 11. Um, and I had started working on them. I'd done a couple, but then I went away. And this is my first one since I came back to you guys sooner than I came back to uh, doing mythics. Um, and I and I had a guild. It was like a three of us were from the guild, and then one was like two of them were pugs. Unfortunately, the tank being one of those two, and we wiped on the boss the first time, and it was kind of a crap show. Um, two out of five of us, me and one other guy in the guild, he was kind of in the same boat as me, where he's like, hey, I'm just kind of learning. And then the second time I died, like I, I totally screwed up. Um, I'm trying to remember what the name of the um, instance was. It was it's the one that's in Suramar. Um, I screwed up immediately. Like, I stood in a pool, and it was a combination, like, where the affix combined with, uh, standing in a pool, and a, a crap I should have easily avoided, and then I think there's, like, a mechanic where you have to jump to reduce these charges, and, um, and then there's the affix where you, you have, like, positive and negative charge, and then you have to, um, you have to like touch someone with the opposite charge to clear the charge before a certain time limit. So it was like me kind of learning that all on the fly with just on my own, with, you know, no real communication with the team, just figuring it out. And uh, I did not do a good job. <laughs> so then everybody like started cussing at each other and quitting. Not me, like I wasn't, but even the person in my guild was like, to me and the other two guildies was like, basically, you guys suck, you should, don't do a, uh, um, a mythic unless you know the mechanics, and it's like, um, the best place to learn the mechanics is in a run with a guild, so, like, I mean, just telling me after the fact when everybody quit, go learn the mechanics, I'm like,
like, dude, like, that's... I appreciate that. It would be awesome if I knew the mechanics. I could watch videos, but even if I watched videos, it's not the same as learning in person. So, whatever. I'll just run lower level mythics for a little while until I learn the mechanics. I'll do my homework. I'll be patient. Um, I wouldn't have ran an 11. Somebody out there was just like, hey, this is super cash. Let's just run it. And I was like, I'm down. I'll do it. Like, whatever. If you guys, I said, I'm telling you, like, what it is, I was completely open about not being experienced with it and whatever. And they're like, oh, you'll be fine. And so we weren't. And then the flame game started. So, you know, it's kind of douchey. I know anybody that has pugs, and you just expect to uh, get a little bit better treatment from your guild, I guess. And whatever. It is what it is. So yeah, not my, um, kind of hitting some strikes, you know, because everything happens in threes. I don't know. So, I'm going to be going to work um, tomorrow and uh, coming in, doing two jobs, staying late to do a second job. Then I got to go back um, to do uh, a couple hours in the evening. Um, there something I gotta be a part of related. so let's see if I can live this this is a little bit dicey A little low on the mana is what I'm low on on this one, but... Should be able to get it going. Okay, that was definitely tight there. Might as well eat another one of those because my time is about to run off. Um, pull it off. Um, yeah, so somehow I'm gonna have to make it work, right? That's what you gotta do. You either do it or you don't. You make it work or you, you, you know, you figure out a way to get it done, you figure out solutions or you figure out excuses. Uh, anybody can explain why something doesn't happen and, and I try to stick to that. I can only control what I can control and I'm gonna have to work a little bit harder in the near future. And, oh well. Thus is life. Oh, I must have got the tail. I did. I wasn't even paying attention. I got the horn, I mean. Cool. So we are done with that part. So that's one of two um, of the grindy parts. We also have uh, now the harpies. It's not that bad. Uh, the drop rate's medium on these lieutenant. And then Echeaki's very quick and easy. And then we'll go turn those in down there. It will come down, we'll kill Varrock's head. That's a little grindy. It's not too bad, though. Um, the first time I did it, there was somebody already clearing out. Basically, you go and you have to kill centaurs until Varrock gets pissed off and he, and he uh, comes and fights. Um, I did it once where I walked in and someone was had been clearing it, it looked like, for a little while. I, and I grouped up with him. And as soon as we grouped up, the guy spawned. That's how it happened to my orc. And then with my rogue... I killed, and I, I don't know, less than 20 guys, probably in the ballpark of around 10 guys, it really wasn't very long, 5-10 minutes, and I was, uh, he spawned, so it really wasn't too bad, um, and he wasn't very hard, no real problems, um, yeah, there's another Kodo, we'll kill that. Um, I haven't really had any problems. We're we're a little ahead of the game ever since we did the dungeon on this, and we're getting close to doing a uh, uh, Wailing Caverns run on this once I get everyone to around level 20. I'm really scared about the Wailing Caverns. Not so much because of like... Ooh, that's the horn I need. Not so much because of my ability to do it. I'm not worried about that. Um, 33 and 3, yeah, that's better. It might better. It's more that that whaling, the whaling caverns, is a huge dungeon. 
very time consuming. And when you pick up pug groups, like the ability to have a patient pug group that does all the quests and doesn't quit. Oh, I shudder. It's hard enough with looking for group where you can randomly refill the spots that leave. Um, I might, I might have to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to do our best on that one too. Um, so I'm not chomping at the bits of that either. But hey guys, I'm here where I, where I most am happy, which is with you. Um, I mean, I guess that's a little bit weird. It's a little reductive. I, I of course am happy with my life i'm happy with family i'm happy with my wife i'm happy with my children i'm happy you know i'm happy with those things but when it comes to the grind the way to be productive look at this person speaking of what we're talking about just bosses and stuff last week my boss announced his wife was trans okay well my bosses didn't do that uh but um, here's the pro, uh, six and a half weeks from now, I will enter the smooth grind. Now, what does that mean? It could mean I have a lot of time to make videos. Could mean that I get that promotion that I'm wanting and then there is no downtime. <laughs> so I don't know. It's, I'm not banking on it this year like last year I was able to really my first year of this show that's how I got to basically 900 I think I went from like 150 episodes to like all, 750 or 800 episodes all over that 2-3 month period like I was busting them out hundreds over a couple months um, and now as you see I'm down to less than 10 a week right now And that's where we're going to stay. So in this six-week period where I'm double working. Well, it'll get easier too because what will happen is um, the rest of this month will be a, a crazy grind. Um, re well, yeah, honestly, for the next... Okay, if I'm being real, of those six and a half weeks, like five and a half of those weeks, it's going to suck for me. Um yeah I don't know there's a lot of logistics uh, this guy has hello uh, 382 Ooh, thank you I will take that it has 5 block 328 and a spirit buff I will take the old ceremonial buckler Yes, please get rid of that severed talent. I don't need that. Get rid of these little one-off things that I don't really need. You know, they don't ever have you kill giraffes. It's one of the few things. There's no real quests that want you to kill them. They're just like, those are pretty. Always a plus air. I'm guessing they mean pleasure. I said plus air. I think pleasure. Plus air is pleasure in Spanish. Do I do a lot of Spanish Duolingo. Um... I think I talked about that, my language background on some of the others. My main language background is in Spanish. Um, I talked about my middle school journey. Um, when I went to college, I went to college out in California, old Cali. Um, we can get rid of these two. I can't carry anymore. So... Uh, I lived when I, well, when I first moved out there, I, I lived in the dorms, but the dorms were like freaking crazy expensive. And after my first like semester, like I was paying, I mean, this is a, a long time ago. This is probably 25 years ago or whatever, but I was paying like, I don't remember. I want to say it was probably like 1200 a month. And this is 25 years ago. Um, 
for to share a two bedroom apartment with three other dudes. Um, that was how the dorms went. So me and they were three strangers. Um, I think the guy that who's I actually shared a bedroom with. His name was there was a two bedroom, two bath. Um, I shared a bedroom with a guy. I think his name was like Mike or something. Um, he was like the senior in college. The rest of us were all freshmen, just starting. Um, and he was like, you had to be twenty at least 20 I think to live in this I lived in like there was like the dorms like the dorm dorms where it was like a thousand people um and then there was an apartment complex that was on campus that was still considered dorm housing um but they were basically like apartments as far as like the party scene went it was great it was a super fun experience it was everything that you see on tv where it was like keg parties and um Inventory the campus cool. was super cool. This, um, actually, I don't know if I'm going to drop that. Uh, I guess I'll drop that shield that I have. Um, it was super convenient. Like, you could... If you wanted to, you didn't have to leave campus. Um, there was the subway did attach right to the campus, um, so you could do. You could, actually, I don't know if I can I cook straight of meat. Oh, I can. If I buy some apples. Okay, so I'm not gonna get rid of my straight of meat. I can get rid of light feathers. I don't need that crap. My life. Um, it was cool though, I really liked it, um, but the guy, it was okay at the time, um, when we first moved in, but like, I was broke, Inventory is full. so when I started college, like, I was freaking broke. Like, I know everyone talks about, like, that broke college lifestyle. Like, I moved out across the country from the East Coast to California. And I think I brought, like, a duffel bag or something. Maybe I had, like, two suitcases or, like, a, two duffel bags. I, I can't remember. Um, I, I, ca I came in. I knew, like, one person in California that was a friend of mine. Um that was like, yeah, we'll hang out. And now they kind of were help, but they weren't really like in a position to do it for me. And uh, I ended up staying in a motel for like a couple days. I had enough money to do that. And then um, I went to the campus and did the little whatever intro that you do. And, Figure out what your life is going to be like. So the guy that I ended up rooming with, um, he was like, I don't know, journalism, some kind of stupid major. Sorry for the, sorry for you journalism majors out there. Um, not that journalism's a stupid major at all. I think it's very admirable. I don't actually. He wasn't journalism because journal. I would have had some more respect for that. It was. He was like a, a major. Maybe it was marketing or something like that. Which again, also yes, cool, valid major. Um, Inventory but it was like his dad bankrolled his whole situation um, and he didn't have to worry about anything so he could just sit around with like no job and just everything was paid for he didn't have to take out student loans and then he would just sort of lecture everybody else for why they weren't like pulling their weight um, financially or not, like as much as everybody else or whatever so he was, and he was like a like stoner, like a rough kind of just, and he was older than all of us. He was probably like, we were all, like I said, around like 20. Um, I think, I think I was, me and one other dude were 20 and then there was a 21 year old guy. And uh, then he was like 26 or something. He was the the old one of us and he had a girlfriend and he had been living in that same apartment for a while um, 
So I became his roommate. Um, we did not. We got along okay, but like it soured. He. Some of it was like valid. Like I was. I had never lived like very much on my own before that. And, um, you know, you come from having like a mom take care of you and all that stuff. I mean, not my mom wasn't like goading on me, but I, I had some gross habits. Like, um, and I was broke as hell. So I was like the mooch of the apartment. So, um, they got tired of me constantly mooching. Um, I would, and also like, I wasn't, I wasn't filthy, but I was not the cleanest, best. Like, I wasn't making up for my mooching by like, hey uh, guys, I'll do all the chores. I was like, hey, can you guys like let me eat your dinner and uh, buy me a beer when we go out? And uh, like, uh, I'm just gonna kind of not do anything different. And I was trying to work it. Like, I was applying for jobs, but I was new. It was the first semester of college, and I did eventually get a job at a liquor store. Um, you're just getting my life story on this episode. I'm just talking and grinding. That's what you get with the grind, you know? This is it. This is a total... I guess I'm going to toss this moss I gave him they sell for a decent amount. I hear an ambusher. Uh, yeah, those guys are what, what, are, are what will get you. They fly around. They're jerks. They can spell... Um, they're the easiest way to get this screwed up. I, I haven't had anyone die to them, but... Um, with my both with my work, it was close because of one of those pushers. There we go. Luckily, I got. Um... Oh, there's two of them. Oh my gosh! Now I gotta, I gotta run, and I will drop a stone claw. Put. I gotta, I gotta dip. Until I can heal up a little bit. That was a bad... Oh my gosh. One potion. Unfortunate. Okay. lost whatever was over there. I did have those people to loot, but whatever. I got myself pretty deep in there, actually. Alright, so I guess, I don't know. It's hard to be... I think when I play, like if I play on like Twitch or whatever, having like give and take with some of these conversations, at some point like you you guys can be like, shut up, man. We don't care. We came here for the World of Warcraft. <laughs> not your Not your pathetic life. We don't care about your job. We don't care about your college experience. Um, but uh, I did meet some good friends. And I guess if nothing else comes out of that, the other two dudes that I lived with, really high quality guys. Um, one of them was a, a guy named Kevin, who was like a super wholesome, athletic guy, very handsome, like super tall. Um, crap. Just, I should play that. Not ideal. Um, I don't even know what spell to bust on this ambusher. Well, I did. Um, he was just, we we really we played a lot of sports. I I was always really into sports, um, but he was like super into sports and he was good at everything um i don't remember what we played together i don't remember what he played with me uh except tennis i i, I used to really be into tennis a lot um i i took lessons when i was younger and i played like i've always off and on played uh, i'm getting old and slow now um but uh i still i still love to play i just i haven't played probably in a couple of years but um I, I do like to play. Um, I just haven't. It's just been something I've kind of gotten away from lately a little bit, but I but I like it a lot. He played with me um, and just other stuff. He'd always be trying to get the some wholesome stuff. We had a good time. Um, but another dude named Matt, uh, who was part of our thing, we're still friends to this day. 
Really like Matt. Shout out to Matt. He still lives out in Cali. Um, I moved back to the East Coast. But, um, just a high, he's just a high quality dude. He's got, a, he's, he's, you know, he's old like me now. He's got a couple baby girls. Uh, he's married. Um, but, so, we play fantasy football together. We stay in touch in that way. But, you know, I can't just kind of have life happen that way. Kind of a shame. Life just sort of very hard to, I think, maintain. Maybe if you have some really close friends, um, like life friends, you can sort of maintain that. So we're going to go kill Echeyaki and then go back to the crossroads. That's my plan. We've done everything else we need to do right here. And then we have the Barog that we're going to do. And... Uh, very quickly go plant the seeds but i think like i was looking at um a, something came into my news feed the other day you're just by the way just mute me <laughs> uh, today i mean i miss you guys i haven't had a chance to rant i could definitely talk it's very grindy if you look at what we're doing what's the lore we are killing harpies for their rings we are, um, we collected some ingredients for a recipe for, a, you know, there's just not a lot of lore. This is just, what is World of Warcraft classic? And I was just kind of like pontificating on this earlier today when I was playing with Millie off camera. This game is just so much, like, what is it about World, World of Warcraft classic? And, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately. What is it that makes us, um enjoy it why is there a need for it why is there a market why is it out here wouldn't the newest best version of the game be better and i think what i experienced today is the perfect example what do you do in retail you just constantly push yourself to consume the latest update the latest patch to push yourself to set that bar You've got to be one of the best. You've got to raise those mythic levels or raise your item level or compete in PvP. Or even with me, who, like, I'm an achievement dog. Like, got to make sure I'm having those high achievements. If I don't have, oh, you know, I have 20,000 or I have 18,000 achievement points, but there's somebody in my guild with 20,000. So I got to push out those high achievement points. And there's you know, 20 years worth of maps and quests. And with Classic, there's, it's still a very big world, but everything is so forced slow. There's no need for it to not be slow. Um, that you can really stop and enjoy. And you can do what we're doing. You can kind of get your brain on autopilot and I can just talk with you guys. Um, just like I was talking to some friends. And I think for me, when you get to a certain age, what friendship is and what having friends are is different. Um, I think having kids, having different career paths, getting married, all those things are tough for good friendships to weather. When you're young, when you're in college, when you're in high school, like your friends are such a big part of your life. At least they were for me. And um, I had the unfortunate experience in life of losing uh, through untimely death um, a, a, a crazily disproportionate number of my, maybe like people from like World War II and v Vietnam times, not to com compare myself to that, but like maybe people like that have the same like number of rate of attrition on friends that they lost to death at early ages. But in my 20s and 30s, um, I watched like half a dozen of my friends, of my close friends that I grew up with pass away um, into just accidents, um, you know, drug overdoses, just different things that <clears throat> left me kind of like the last man standing. So I've got this weird survivor syndrome when it comes to that. And I think it makes me just... 
I think that's partly also why I, I gravitate towards this sort of thing because um, as cool as it is, the comments that I get, this is also, there's an anonymity and there's a, even if you do guilds in World of Warcraft, people come and go, they stop playing, you know. Um, very rare to find a permanent friend on World of Warcraft, at least it is for me. So I think there's something like this, like, I'll be here. As long as I make this show, I'll, I'll be here and, and this conversation that I have that there is potentially an audience for. Um, wow. Getting really weird today, guys. Let's kill Echeyake. So we're going to blow the horn of Echeyake and we'll bring him. Oh, hey. What's up, bro? So what do I do? I see a really cool looking white lion. And my first thought is, we'll murder him. Duh. Probably gonna skin him for good measure too. You notice, man, we've been pretty good. Like this turret is solid. Inventory is full. Even the Aboriginal foot wraps on the owl. It's kind of trash. Can't do anything. All right, so let's go sell before we go to <clears throat> the back half. The and it'll be much quicker. So we, these seeds that literally takes five seconds, and then. Um, we will go and grind out. So, uh, my apologies for the for the random stuff today. This is just what's been on my mind. You know, I've got a lot that's been building up in there since I took a, <laughs> a couple weeks off, week and a half off. Um, but I appreciate you guys, those of you that that hang out and listen and just listen to me play this game. And if not, if you don't like listening, cool, mute it. You can kind of see what the grind looks like. We're not, I have been, you know, uh, I'm getting subscribers. There's crazy people out there like me. Um, we'll get there, and we'll 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 hit that 1,000 soon enough, and we'll uh, can start monetizing it. And maybe I can tell when when they try to screw me over at work, I can I can tell them, you know what? No. I'm not going to just take it. Uh, so, um, the next episode we're going to do on here, uh, I mean, we'll read, we'll read it. I should, tomorrow I think I could probably still get a reading one in, because those don't take as long. Um, so I'll have a regular work day. I'm going to try to cut out like early, maybe 10, 15 minutes early. But if not, I'll leave like right on time. Come home, grab lunch. I, Cause I'm a, I'm like a late lunch kind of guy. I'd rather eat. I kind of eat like a weird eating habit where I'll, I'll do late lunch and then uh, I'll eat dinner like a couple hours after I eat lunch and I condense all my eating into like that part of my day and then I gotta go back to an event at work um, and I gotta work that I don't have to but that's the kind of person I am uh, it's a, something that uh, there's a lot of there will be a lot of like visitors um, and stakeholders so I'm that's probably my biggest strength I'm very good at, uh, at FaceTime Great Cat calls to you all beaten at Chayake though his days of hunting are over his spirit is with you I will show you the strength found in subtlety and the honor and mercy the path is still long joy. so if you stride the man Okay, and she'll give us the next quest, which is to kill these raptors. I actually think I did this with Chilanji already. It's not that hard. The angry scythe claws. Now mold the hunt deepens. Now you must defeat your prey and then find your way to its lair. Hunt the sun scale raptors to the south. Slay them and remove the feathers they wear. Place the feathers on the scythe claw nest southwest of the stagnant oasis. Show their brethren you do not fear them. That's kind of messed up. And it's also showing, like, I don't know. They do this a, a lot, but, like, 
they really imply that the raptors are smart as heck more than just like clever girl on jurassic park like they make them smart as heck like almost sentient zog, zog. like almost like anthropomorphically smart you have six hoppy lieutenant rings yet justice must be dealt to them for their vicious attacks on the horde Excellent work, my friend. I think you'll go far within the horde, and then, like on one of the next times, we'll kill, we'll kill their leader, Silly the Bloodfeather. You did so well with the lieutenants and underlings that I'd like you to do one last thing for me. Serena Bloodfeather is the sister of a harpy named Bloodfeather, who was slain by Rexar quite a while ago. Oh, that must be from Warcraft 3. Apparently, these attacks on the horde caravans are revenge for her sister's death. I need you to slit her throat and bring me back her head. <laughs> I want to place it on the next caravan we send out. Give those hoppies right. something to think about. Uh, that's like extreme, bro. Slitter freaking throat. Guy has issues. But I guess we have issues too because we're gonna do it. We gonna slit that throat. Will you be? Sell those. Um, sell that. I didn't notice I had that. I was selling much better stuff. That's all. I think some of this stuff. So, yeah, let's do the mild spices. Is there a place to cook in your room? I think there is. Stay away from the voodoo. Stay away from the voodoo. Yeah, there's a cooking table. And then I'm going to just sell it. What brings you here? Oh, I need these apples. Because that's going to give me the strider meat that I can cook. That's actually better than what I have. So I'm going to keep the strider stew like on tap. I'm going to be eating that strider stew, yo. Cool. Got a hundred cooking. That, that cooking's, it's all the hunting he does, really. Loot the dog. I kind of like that name. Alright, so I'm gonna put that there and I'm gonna replace my spice wolf meat with the. Uh, um, what else do we have? No, no. No, no. I'm gonna. I'll toss those in the sink. No, no. I can't cook Kodo? No, it's not Kodo, it's Thunderlish. I'm gonna sell it since I don't have a recipe for it. I need to do something. I'm selling it. I need to go learn, actually I can do that. I need to go learn uh, the wool bandage. That's something I need to do. Oh, I guess I can cut that. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I think that's good. I can probably, I'm gonna ditch the mild spices. Okay. None's too shabby. None's too shabby. We're doing okay on gold. Uh, we, uh, we do need to go turn. Uh, actually, we'll turn Chen's empty okay again at the end. Let's go. Let's go kill Barog. Even though that does make me keep these stupid ingredients, it's okay. And then the, um, the Oasis is like super cool. So we'll turn these two in, and then we will fly back, and, and when we go to Ratchet, that will be, I think next episode, I want to do Ratchet. Like, I want to start in Ratchet and start, pick up however many quests we can fit. And because we're going to get another Varog quest, none of these, we're going to be at 13, because both these quests that we finish, Chen's Empty Keg, ke uh, keg even when you finish that, it uh, gives you a... Like a repeatable quest. To get some other kind of brew. I did kill... Um, the reason why Talanji is kind of done with this is because she... Like, there's just a decent amount of raptors around here and I just killed them. But I've been having a lot of fun with Classic. Uh, I really have. I, I just wish... I don't know, I think at its core, my most 
the, my, my most favorite part of World of Warcraft is the lore. Like, doing a quest one time. And I like to play, and I, I am competitive, so that's why I push myself to do mythics and raids. I mean, I want to do that. You got to do the raids because of the lore, but you could do looking for looking for a group on that. You'll be okay. Um. Yeah. Oh well. And there's just other stuff. I just really, it's. I think at the core, it's kind of like what I said before. It's the non-confrontational part. Even like there he is. I can just kill my man right now. I don't even gotta summon him. It's awesome. <laughs> this is great. So Barog the Dervish is just gonna be ready to die. Look at us crushing him. Okay, so that was insanely easy. I don't know why he was there just chilling. Obviously somebody like pissed some people off. Oh look, there's a Kodo. So we're pretty much done now. We're gonna now it's just gonna be a matter of, of planting these seeds and dropping some stuff off. Wow, very nice. But I've had a great time with you guys. Um and I I mean I know, I know. I know my flaws, I know who I am. Um Hopefully it wasn't too emo and too weird and uh, I try to balance that out in, in terms of just some days we just talk about the game and some days, uh, you know, we got to get it off the chest and talk about life. And today was a life day. I mean, I think it's probably, you know, partly like just having one of these. You guys hit me at that moment where I'm like, what the heck? And I'm kind of having like these existential crises lately where I, too far I know away. what I've got to do. I know my flaws. I know my weaknesses. I know... Like I had my boss that was like I was I was talking about the way that somebody to one of my bosses um, how somebody screws me this this person has just been screwing me over basically being incredibly rude and unprofessional and I tell my boss like you know and then they said I want you to do this and. I, while I am kind of this person's superior, kind of, um, I like to think of myself when in these, when, when I'm in these roles, this is just, this comes back to like my own space, like my philosophy towards the world and my religious perspective on the world. Um, because I am a religious person and I do have, uh, of course, my own philosophies as everybody does. Um, and I'm a lot, and I think kind of like a lot of people, and I think this is kind of crappy, but um, I'm a lot worse of a person in this game than I would ever be in real life. Like, just a little thing. I mean, I don't know. Maybe not that I would ever be, but I try to be a good person. I try to strive for that, to, to just be better every day. And I don't mean be better like a better gamer or like improve my skills, but I mean to be a better person. Um, and I think part of my philosophy is I should always be seeking to be a servant. Um, and I don't always succeed at that and people can take advantage. It's like that double-edged sword, like we should always seek peace, but at what point do you have a moral imperative to fight, you know? Um, at, you know, how right was Gandhi? How much is absolute pacifism? How far can you take that philosophy? Do you protect your children? Do you protect your family? Do you fight in wars? You know, how do you... At what point, where's that line where one extreme... Um, it an extreme approach to morality in itself becomes immoral and i think we, we we you see that depending on your beliefs in a lot of areas um you know how far do you protect the rights of unborn children um, or fetuses or however you want to look at them compared with the right of 
you know, women to control their own bodies. Like there's these these debates and dichotomies. And I think for myself, I have that that dichotomy. How far do I push the striving to want to be a servant, to want to be um, to take to turn the other cheek? You know, these things that are that are gospel if you follow like a Christian faith. Um, how far do you take those things? Because when you look around in the world, they're not truly taken very far. Most... Please, friend. Your findings are amazing. The seeds I gave you are dried and dead. Whatever rests under these oases can create life from nothing. We study this more. Ah, I'm now honored with Thunder Bluff. Altered beings. Your findings are an incredible, Mole. These oases hold properties that must come from an outside source. Or perhaps an inside one. I want to know how these fissures are affecting the beasts who drink from the oasis water. Hunt oasis snapjaws of the lush water on stagnant oases and bring me their shells so I may have We're not going to do that today, but yes, we'll do that. If you notice, I could... Two things to, to, oh, I, to actually talk about the game. <laughs> when we are under that water, one, don't sweat because when you're down there by the oasis, you are... Uh, you, you're, you can actually breathe underwater. And two, after you plant those seeds, you can loot them for this fissure plant. Um, it just is 243. It's the same. It's basically a level five. Um, yeah, it even says level five it, uh, food that provides no buff. So you can you can sell it without any kind of, or unless you need food, then keep it. But like, it's it doesn't provide a buff. So I'm also going to run over right now and turn in that guy's head and he'll give me another head. He wants to collect. But anyhow, like, you just don't see it in the world. At least that's my own personal perspective. I think, yeah, you see it at church. You see it among, like, friends. You see it in civil situations. But when push comes to shove, when you're really out there... I, I just... I don't know how many people, even church-going people, even religious people, even whatever, truly follow those philosophical tenets of what I think the spirit of some of these religious movements are behind. And that goes for whether you're Christian, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Muslim, whether you're, um, you know, Taoist, whatever you are. It's very hard to rip yourself away from wanting to be a hero of your life wanting to fight for what's right, wanting to protect and save um, versus being humble and walking in humility and holding your tongue and not self-aggrandizing and turning the other cheek. So I struggle with that. I don't know what's right or wrong. And I think at different times and on different days, I try to do other, and I'm influenced by the people around me too. So. When someone basically, when I'm sitting there with my boss and I tell this story about this person did blah, 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 blah. And then they were like, can you do this? And then, I, and then I'm like, okay. And then I go to talk about like how they screwed me over. And then my boss is like, that's your problem right there. Did you find fear, Ogmon? Oh, very good. You must have really stirred up those centaur. Our gods spotted activity down near the stagnant oasis, which is probably you. You should be proud of your deed, Mon. There's much bravery in you. Hezrul Bloodmark. Hezrul Bloodmark is the leader of the Kolkar centaurs in the Barrens. He is fierce, brutal, and cunning. Defeating him would disrupt and fracture the Kolkars greatly, reducing their threat to us. So kill him! As with Barak and Varog, bring me Hezrul's head. His people. He leads his people from the Lushwater Oasis to the south. Right. We'll kill him next time. And so, I take that to heart. You know, when someone gives me... You know, hearing that advice, uh, I think And you know, if you're gonna, I guess I guess for me, if you're gonna be humble and turn the other cheek and, and be a servant then you can't complain So I've gotta get there That's, I think, if, if I married those two concepts do it with silence, man take it um, and I don't know how good I am at that. 
I don't think I'm very good. Because I do have this, when I feel affronted, I will be vocal about it. There's that. Uh, it might take me a little bit of time before I will feel affronted. I might bring it on and allow it to happen. But once I've reached that breaking point, I will let anyone know, <laughs> including you guys. So, hey, I appreciate everybody for listening and watching. Um, I love this uh, little bone here. I love this story. And I had a good time killing. I'm glad we had no deaths, unlike last time with Millie. Um, we're just going to go pop off, gem, drop off Jen's empty keg. We'll fly over to Ratchet and then we'll call it a wrap on this one. But this one also, I've already done these, this batch of quests twice, so I was definitely kind of on autopilot. We will do um, uh, our Night Elf. On the next episode, we'll we'll we'll, we'll do a reading and then we'll do a night. Off. So I think I'll be able to do the reading tomorrow. Cause even if I get home late, which is gonna put me at about a twelve hour day, um tomorrow's a night uh work night for Mrs. Gleekon. So I usually like tonight is too, as you can see it's server time eleven. I normally on work nights I don't uh if she's here I don't because we'll that's part of how we've stayed married and happy for so long is we make sure every night that we kind of have a cutoff time. It's like an unspoken thing, like by around nine or so, I better be done. I better be ready to give the rest of the night over to her. And we're both night owls. Um, I'll burn the candle at both ends. I, I'm luckily enough, I, I'm i pretty solid if I just get about five hours of sleep a day. So I'll go to bed soon um, and I'll be fine. I'll wake up. Uh, we'll we'll play around with Ratchet uh, soon. Uh, probably with Varrock. We'll we'll get that going. I think that'll be fun. Nice. Maybe not ever, everyone because the quest log is so full. I don't think I can fit them all. But we can we can get a big batch of them. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. It looks like there's eight. So. All right. So how's the search going? Ah, I never thought I'd make more of this stuff ever again. You've started me a great sense of nostalgia, Mon. That reminds me of the last time I made a bunch of trog brew. Thank you. Memory is warm my stomach. Yeah, it increases your strength by four, but decreases the intellect by five. Thanks. That's kind of a double-edged sword for him. Like for a warrior, whatever, cool. Knock yourself out. And then he, this is a repeatable. Good stuff, that storm stuff, huh? I have another recipe that I learned from Chen. Would you be interested? It won't take long to make it. It might be useful if you plan on adventuring some more. Bring me five lightning glands from any storm hide, one Thunderhawk saliva gland from Greater Thunderhawks, and a Kodo liver from any of the Baron's Kodos. Like I said, this stuff has kick. The Trog brew that I mentioned to you before. This increases your health but decreases your spirit. I don't. I mean, I'll accept it. And if you look, it's blue. That means I believe it is repeatable. We'll still do it at least once, just for fun, those because that's how we roll. Right, let's get ourselves into a little sleepy thing. Thank you so much for Psychology Hour with Gleekon. Um, I do have a good time. I do like having you guys with me. Um, you know, and I, you know, I might just say screw it. It's so much fun when we do Burning Crusade. I might just run through with a couple characters anyway, just for the, just for the glory, just for the funsies. All right, everyone, we got another episode. In the pipe, five by five. I thank you so much for watching and for listening. And I will see you all next time on Lore of Warcraft.